Praise the Lord. You commit your heart to the Lord tonight. That the Lord will write his word upon the tables of your heart. And that the word he writes there will become indelible. Guide you and lead you through life and control your life. That this word in its mighty power, mighty unction, will help you to live. To please the Lord, not to please yourself, to please the Lord. So that when the rapture will take place, this word will assist you. When the saints go marching in, you will be among them. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord in prayer. Pray that the study of the word will so profit you and benefit you. That God himself will see the profit, the gain, that you have in the study of the word. You will know it. That the word is making a difference in your life. Your neighbors too will see. Your life will draw, attract other people to come. And study and know the Lord like you know the Lord. Pray that God will keep you awake. As we study together the word of God tonight. That the transforming power of the word will so work in a dynamic way your heart and your life. And pray that as you listen and learn, you believe and you obey, God will make a preacher out of your life. You'll be a soul winner, teaching other people, leading other people in the way of the Lord. As we learn together, come to us of the word. And preachers of the word as well. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for our fellowship around the world tonight again. We thank you, Lord, because every time we come, you reveal your mind, your will, your purpose, your plan to us. And Lord, we pray both young and old, Child, uh, children and parents, and the leaders and the teachers, as well as the learners. Every one of us will learn from your word tonight in Jesus' name. We're asking, O oh Lord, you keep us awake. That, Lord, the tiredness of the body will not make us sleep while the word is going on in Jesus' name. Teach us, Lord, and lead us in the word. We pray that the grace to follow through and the grace to so learn that you will bring conviction, transformation, power in our life. You give unto us in Jesus' name. That all of us will see the glory, the beauty of the study of the world in every life. And will they want to follow after the Lord like we are following the Lord in Jesus' name. Bring conviction through the world. Commitment through the word, courage through the word, that we'll be able to go on living according to the conviction you have painted and planted in our hearts in Jesus' name. Lead your people, teach your people tonight. Be glorified and exalted, and let the church be edified. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Thank you very much. I welcome you to the Bible study tonight. It's always a glorious time, wonderful time, as we meet together and we study the Word of God. By the way, you'll notice that when the book of Daniel, and Daniel has two parts. It's like it has a historic part, and then the prophetic part. The historic part is uh, what you have in chapters 1 to 6. And in the prophetic part, we have in chapter 7, all through to 12. We're taking our time, going very slowly. In chapters 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. The reason we've done that is because there's so much to learn of the life of Daniel and his three friends and the people around them at that time. And we're about concluding chapter 6. Before you come into chapter 7, which is prophetic. We're looking at three verses today in Daniel chapter 6. And we're reading from verse 25. Then King Darius wrote unto all people and nations and languages that dwell in all the earth. Peace be multiplied unto you. I make a decree. 
that in every dominion of my kingdom, men tremble and fear before the God of Daniel, for he is the living God and steadfast forever. And his kingdom, that which shall not be destroyed, and his dominion shall be even unto the end. He delivereth and rescueth, and he walketh signs and wonders in heaven and in earth, who has delivered Daniel from the power of liars. You know what has happened here? Already we've gone through uh, Daniel chapter 6, verses 1, all through to 24. And the people that plotted and planned, they wanted Daniel dead. But the believer will never die before his time. And you will not die before your time in Jesus' name. You know those people, they wanted to deny Daniel of prolonged ministry. Not only that, they wanted to deny the church. Of the revelation that God has for us in chapter 7 all through to 12. What if they succeeded? I mean those enemies. I mean those persecutors. I mean those haters of progress. And what if they succeeded in getting rid of Daniel? How would you be able to have the book of Daniel? How would you be able to have all these other chapters that follow? You know what the devil wants to do in your life? Is to stop your ministry. But he will not succeed. You see, a child of God, as a calling of God, as a commission from God, and you do not know the things that are still ahead that you are going to do, and you are going to do them. But thank God they did not succeed. And so Daniel remained alive. And because he remained alive, you know the story, how the king came very early in the morning. And then he said, Daniel, are you still there? It's your God, whom you serve day and night continually. Is he able to deliver you from the mouth and from the power of the liars? And then Daniel replied and said, my God has sent his angel. And he has shut the liars' mouths that they have not hurt me for as much as before him. Innocency was found in me. And also before the king have I done no hurt. And that's where we stopped the other time and the king became so happy in verse 23. Then was the king exceeding glad for him and commanded that they should take Daniel out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den and no manner of heart was found upon him because what? He believed his God. Like I'm sure you believe your God. That triumph. That overcoming power of Daniel over those lions, the face that he had produced a great testimony to the, t- to the power and the care and the love of the living God for his own. It was faith in God that made Daniel dare the decree of the king. It was faith in Daniel that made him remain calm under life's threatening trouble and trial. You see, when you have faith in God, there will be no panicking. There'll be no fear. And there'll be no anxiety or worry. You'll be calm. You'll be cool. And you'll be fearless and bold with conviction. Even though your life might be threatened. Because you know you will not die before your time. And because you know whatever happens in the world. God has the final say. Christ has the final say. In your life, Satan does not have the final say. The world does not have the final say. And all those persecutors, all those enemies, they do not have the final say. Who has the final say? God. Who has the final say? Christ. The final say you find in the promise of God. And that means then that your word, when you stand on the promises by faith, you with God and Christ in you, you have the final say. If you say, I will not die, you will not die. If you say, the lions will not destroy me, they will not destroy you. If you say unto the mountain, you mountain, I'm still going to get rid of you, and I have a further ministry to have, uh, to be able to minister to other people, you have the final say. I said you have the final say. So I'm asking you then, what do you say? 
when those presidents and princes, when those persecutors and lions, when they're all there gazing at you and they want to destroy you. And you remember that they don't have the final say. And that the enemies don't have the final say. That you have the final say. And whatever you say, you'll have what you say. And if you say, I'm going to get in there and come out and continue ministry, you'll, it will be like that in Jesus' name. It was the faith that Daniel had. That was the faith that kept him. And the faith will keep you in Jesus' name. It was faith that brought assurance that all will be well at the end. And I want to tell you, in your life, all will be well at the end. Already, you know, we just, we just uh, finish our covenant month, and you remember uh, that my, you know, sometimes some people, they, they laugh, they, they don't know what to do with me when I see, because I have a baritone voice, but whether baritone or solo or whatever, you know, it is well. I said it is well, and it will be well with you this year in Jesus' name. And Daniel knew that. Daniel knew that it was well. Because of that, that's why he had peace. That's why he had patience uh, to his, uh, in his heart in the hour of danger and probable death. It was faith that moved God's heart to send the angel into the den and to shut the mouths of all the lions. All the lions in your life, the Lord will shut their mouth in Jesus' name. God recognizes faith and responds to all its call and petition. And then when Daniel came out, the Bible says no manner of heart was found upon him because he believed in his God. Deliverance of Daniel brought a great discovery to Darius the king. He saw God as the living God, having personality. Having love, having affection, having compassion in his heart, having power, kingdom, glory, dominion, majesty. The great God is not just a great mighty force like electricity. He is the living God. It's not an impersonal, person, impersonal powerful substance. And it's not just like thunder or like any other force that has no life. He is the living God. He is not like man, living and growing, who passes from infancy to manhood in life. He is the unchanging God. It touched the spirit of Darius that there is a being, a God, a living God, that could accomplish such great supernatural acts uncommon to man since the world began. He could not resist the urge. He could not resist the desire to proclaim and publish the knowledge and the revelation of the living God to all people, all nations, and all languages that dwell in all the earth. That's why the Bible is telling us that like they did, you don't want a person like Nebuchadnezzar to beat you to it. To go ahead of you and do more than you are doing. You see, when the Cadenesser had the miracle working power of God in his life, he gave the glory to God. Not just in local place, he published it, publicized it in all nations and with people and languages. And now when Darius saw this, even though the miracle did not happen to Darius in particular, it happened to Daniel. All the same, he said, you cannot keep this. You cannot keep quiet. You cannot hold on to this. You cannot hide this. Everybody must know. Everybody must hear. And because of that, he published it everywhere. And that's what we are going to do. And that's what you are going to do. You'll tell everybody around you of the, of the miracle working power of God in Jesus' name. Look at Daniel chapter 4. Daniel chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 1. Nebuchadnezzar the king unto all people and nations and languages that dwell in all the earth. You see what he did? You see what Nebuchadnezzar did when he came out of his sanity? When he came out of the problem that he had? We're told he wrote unto all the people. All the nations, all the languages that dwell in all the earth, peace be multiplied unto you. I thought it good to show the signs and the wonders that the high God has wrought toward me. How great are his signs and how mighty are his wonders. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and his dominion is from generation to generation. And if you have gratitude in your heart, 
and you are happy and you, are, you know that God has done something great for you. He saved your soul. He brought peace in your heart. You are reconciled unto God. He has healed you. He has delivered you. You want to tell everybody around. That's what Nebuchadnezzar did. And even when it has not happened to you directly, it has happened to your friend. It has happened to somebody you love. It has happened to somebody that you know. Like Darius knew Daniel. And that thing happened to Daniel. He wasn't the one that received the miracle. But because of this great manifestation of the power of God, he said, everybody must hear this, even though I'm not the one that received the miracle. And as uh, whatever miracle you hear in your district, in your region, in your nation, in your state, anywhere, you go and tell other people to show the might and the glory, the power and the strength of the Almighty God. We're looking at Isaiah chapter 30. I say, chapter 34, I'm reading from verse 1. Come near, ye nations, to hear, and hearken ye people, let the earth hear, and all that dwell therein, the world, and all things that come forth of each. This does not have always been the attitude of children of the children of God, of the servants of the Lord, that when God has done something wonderful and something great they want to tell everybody around come and hear that's why jesus gave us a great commission after they saw after those disciples saw him he rose from the dead and they saw the manifestation of the power of god in raising him from the dead he said now you have seen now you have known it's me myself i died but then i've risen again for the salvation of the world now you go into all the world and and teach and preach the gospel this good news and this glad tidings the story of redemption go and tell everyone that jesus christ is risen again go and tell everyone they don't have to die in their sins go and tell everyone they can be saved because jesus christ died for them and he rose again if they really did it, you can do it, you are going to do it. If Nebuchadnezzar did it, you can do it, you are going to do it. If the apostles did it, you can do it, and you are going to do it in Jesus' name. We're looking at uh, this study tonight on the divine attributes of the living God. The divine attributes of the living God. Come back to Daniel chapter 6. In Daniel chapter 6, I'm reading from verse 26. It says, I make a decree that in every dominion of my kingdom, men tremble and fear before the God of Daniel. And I begins to give us the attributes of that God. And begins to give us the authority of that God. Begins to give us the acts of that God. He talks about his attributes. He talks about his authority. And talks about his action, his acts. Look at verse 26. It says, before the God of Daniel... For he is the living God and steadfast forever. And his kingdom, that which shall not be destroyed. And his dominion shall be even unto the end. Now the acts of the actions and the wonders and the signs and the things that he did. In verse 27, he delivereth and rescueth. And you know, you see, you see Darius. Uh, Darius could have said, he delivered. He rescued if he was talking about Daniel alone. But this man, he saw that this is a living God. And a living God does not only act in the past. A living God does not only do something in the past. He acted in the past. He's acting now. He will continue to act. That's why Darius put it in the present continuous tense. And he says, he delivereth. He delivered, he's delivering now, he'll continue to deliver in Jesus' name. He rescueth, he rescued, he's rescuing people now, and he will continue to rescue. And then he tells us, he walketh, not that he just walked in the past, yes, he walked in the past, and he's walking now, and he will continue to walk. He walketh signs and wonders in heaven and in earth. He tells us there is no area, there is no dominion, well, in the sky. Or in the firmament of heaven, or in heaven itself, on earth, under the earth, anywhere a miracle working power of God is needed, God does it because He works signs and wonders in heaven and in earth. 
who has delivered Daniel? Because he has this power that abideth forever. And because he has this glory and honor that abideth forever. That's why he delivered Daniel from the power of the lions. We're going to divide the study tonight to three parts. Number one, the attributes of the living God. Not a dead God. Not an impotent God. Not a God that used to be, but is no more. The living God that is still alive today and will be alive forever. It's been alive from all eternity, dateless past, unto the future eternity, eternal future, dateless future, because He is the living God. And we're going to look at some of His attributes. Number two, the authority of the living God. He has kingdom, He has dominion, He has power, He has strength. And he has majesty, and everything is under his control. The winds and the waves and the storm and the lions and the bear and everything, every power on earth, you find under the authority and the control of this almighty God. He has authority, the authority of the living God. And then the acts of the living God. You know there are people, when you think about men, they can do something, but they don't. They have the ability, but they don't. They are not willing. But in the case of God, he has the power. And because of the love he has, and because of his mercy, and because of his goodness, and because of his affection, he has compassion, he has love, he has mercy. Because of that, he makes use of his ability to do something in the lives of the people that believe on him. That's how we're going to look at number three, the acts of the living God. Number one, the attributes of the living God. The attributes of the living God. Number two, the authority of the living God. The authority of the living God. Number three, the acts, the actions of the living God. Let's come back to number one. What's number one? The attributes of the living God. Let's come back to Daniel chapter 6, verse 26. The first part of verse 26. Here is what it says. I make a decree that in every, in every dominion of my kingdom, men tremble and fear before the God of Daniel, for he is the living God. He is who? The living God. And steadfast forever. Now, Darius said, in my kingdom, I stamp out a teasing. I wash off, I clean off, I destroy by a decree. That there is no atheism in my kingdom. If he could do that in his whole kingdom, how about you in your own territory? How about you in your family? How about you among the circle of friends that you have? That you say all around me, you are here and then you draw a circle around yourself and say inside the circle, the circle of my family. And the circle of my friends. And the circle of the people that know me. All the people that are associated with me. There's not going to be atheism. Atheism is the people that say there's no God. The Darius said, in my kingdom, in my dominion, anyone around me here on whom I have any control in my jurisdiction... There's nobody that is serving a, a dead God. There's nobody saying there is no God because we have seen. And we see it in Daniel. And we know that there is a God in heaven. If there is no God in heaven, look, I about Daniel. I about the preservation. I about the protection. I about the fulfillment of the promise of God upon Daniel. Therefore, he said, All around me here, no atheism. If you can make up your mind, that's. None of your friends will be an atheist. Am I right? None of your people, the people that are close to you, you'll not be, you know, walking hand in hand and walking shoulder to shoulder with somebody who does not believe in this living God. And then you see the God of heaven is the living God. He is the fountain of life. That's what Darius just discovered. He said, the God of Daniel. By the way, you understand the difference between the God of Daniel and the God of Belshazzar and the God of Babylon and the God of this world. And the God of whatever. This is different. 
This is the creator of the heavens and the earth. And this is the living God. He is the fountain of life and is the giver of life. All living creatures derive their lives from him. And we all depend on him. But he himself, the living God, he is independent. That means he can live without you. He can live without the whole world. He had been living without the world before the world was created. And therefore he has independent life, independent power, independent control, independent authority. He is immutable. That means unchangeable. He is infinite. He is eternal. In fact, the Bible says, the word of God says, and we know it, he liveth forever. His existence is from everlasting as well as to everlasting. He is without beginning as well as without end. How mysterious that is. God has life in himself. In fact, that's what Jesus Christ himself, who came from the very bosom of the Heavenly Father. That's what he said in John chapter 5, verse 26. John chapter 5, verse 26. For as the Father has life in himself, so has he given to the Son to have life in himself. That means, you know, in our own case, we derive our lives from God. He created us. He made us. He gave us life. But nobody gave him life. He had always been alive from all eternity. He has life in himself. He had Christ himself affirms that God is a source of all life. As he is the living God. The living God is the eternal king who had been, who had been alive before the time, before time began. And who will continue to live when time shall be no more. He is immortal. And he is incorruptible in his essence. He is permanent. He is unchangeable. He is eternal. He is the true God, the living God, the holy God. He is a righteous God. He is a merciful God. He is a faithful God. He is a mighty God. He is the eternal God. And that's what Daniel had known all along. That's what gave Daniel faith. When you know the kind of God you serve, when you know the power, the eternality, the infinity, of the God yourself, you know the majesty, and you know the power, the strength, the highness, the greatness of the God you serve. Nothing will terrify you anymore. And he is the God of heaven. He is the God of heaven and earth. He is the God of the whole earth. He is the God of the spirits of all flesh. He is the God of truth, without iniquity, just and right. He is the Lord God of knowledge, and the God of glory, and the God of peace. And he is the God of patience and consolation, and the God of our salvation. You think about this God, he's so great. And that's why Darius said, this is the living God. And we have the proof of it because we have seen the manifestation of his power in Daniel. And I pray that your neighbors will see the manifestation of the greatness, the goodness, and the mercy, and the compassion, and the power of God through your life. Everything I pray to you this year in Jesus' name. And like Darius not believed because of what we saw in Daniel about the almighty God, I pray that people around you too, they will believe through you in Jesus' name. We're looking at Deuteronomy chapter 32. Deuteronomy chapter 32. Let's listen to the almighty God himself declaring who he is. Darius had said, he's the living God. What does God say about himself? Look at it in Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 40. For I lift up my hand to heaven and say, I live forever. Think about the almighty God himself affirming and confirming. And saying, yes, Darius was right. And all the people that know him as a true God, as a faithful God, as the immutable God, unchanging God, and the living God, they are right. Because God himself said, I lift up my hand to heaven and I say, I live forever. We're looking at Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40, and we're reading from verse 28. Here himself, the Lord is asking a question. 
when you have a problem and you tremble, the Lord is asking you a question. When you have a mountain before you and you're afraid, the Lord is asking you a question. When your body is racked with pain and sickness, and then you begin to shake and tremble and you become afraid, the Lord is asking you a question. When the princes and the presidents, when they surround you and they say, we'll kill you, we'll destroy you, we'll make a decree that will terminate your life and will terminate your ministry and then you become afraid the lord is asking you a question when the people of the world when they gather around and then they say ah, you think you're going to church you think you're serving god we're going to deal with you and then your knees begin to knock together and you begin to be, breathe very fast and see i'm going to die the people of the world they said they are going to deal with me the lord is asking you a question look at that question in uh, chapter 40 of isaiah verse 28 as thou not known why are you afraid why are you intimidated why are you shaking why are you worried why are you anxious as thou not known as thou not heard that the everlasting god the lord the creator of the ends of the earth fainteth not neither is weary there is no searching of his understanding you will not be afraid again because this God is your God. This God is your heavenly father. And he says, I'll never leave you. I will never forsake you. He says, he'll be with you to the very end. No worry, no anxiety anymore in Jesus' name. He giveth power to the faint. And to them that have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint. Now, it's, it's talking about the youth that do not know God. The youth that do not have God, but the youth that know God, you will not faint. The youth that know God, you will not be weary. The youth that know God, you will not fall, you will not falter, you will not fail. But those who do not know God, you know, there are storms in life. The difficulties in life, there are dangers in life. And the people that do not have the almighty God to help them, what are they going to do in the day of danger, in the day of battle? For us who know God, there is nothing to fear. I said, for us who know God, there is nothing to fear. He says, he giveth power to the faint and to them that have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall do what? They shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. When you know this living God, it will be with you. How does somebody know the living God? Because, you see, in the case of Darius, he was still doubtful. Daniel is your God, whom you serve continually. He's able to deliver you from the power of the lions. He didn't know. He wanted to find out. How do you cross from the point of unbelief to the point of faith? That, you know, there's God, the mighty God, he'll never leave me. He'll never forsake me. And whatever I'm passing through, I'm, go I'm not going to stay there. I'm going to pass through, and I'm going to come to the other side, the resurrection side. You, you need to turn away from every other God and turn unto the living God. Look at First Thessalonians chapter 1. First Thessalonians chapter 1. And you're going to find out how we now come to believe in the living God. How the living God becomes our God. And becomes a Lord. And it becomes a Savior. Becomes a Redeemer. And then it becomes a stay and a strength of our very lives. We're looking at First Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 9. For they themselves show forth what manner of entering in we urge unto you. How ye turned, that's a word, mark that word. How ye turned, how ye turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God. You see, all men have been seen as the Bible says, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The Bible says, there is no one righteous, no, not one. The Bible says, we have all gone astray. We served the dead God. The gods that be no gods at all. But now, when you hear the gospel, 
and the preacher comes to you like you're hearing the word of God now and a soul winner an evangelist comes to you and the word that he preaches has an entrance into your heart and then as a result of that word coming to you oh you say I need to turn I didn't know this before I didn't have the light before. I didn't know the way of salvation before, but now I know. And you turn from yourself, and you turn from sin, and you turn from the world. If the world was your God before, that means the world controlled your thoughts, your action, your life. And you are so much afraid whatever the world will say or do because the world was your God. Or maybe self was your God. You idolized self. You exalted self. You worshipped self. And you, you did everything you sacrificed to self. But now you turn away from that God. And or it was sin. You loved sin so much. You delighted in sin so much. And you ate sin and drank sin and embraced sin. And you, you just lived your life in sin. And sin was your God. You turned from that God. The dead God. And you turned to the living God. That's what the Testaments did. That's how the living God, the true God, the mighty God became their God. And it says he turned to God from idols to serve the living and the true God and to wait for his son from heaven whom he has raised, whom he raised from the dead even Jesus which delivered us from the wrath to come. When you turn to the living God and the true God, you are delivered from the wrath to come. And the wrath and the judgment of God in the future will not come upon you again in Jesus' name. We're looking at Acts of the Apostles chapter 14. Acts of the Apostles chapter 14. In Acts of the Apostles chapter 14, Paul the Apostle got there. And when he got there, these people, uh, they, they, they wanted to make, they wanted to make Paul a man. They wanted to make him a God. Uh, see, I'm reading now from verse 12. From verse 12 it says, And they called Barnabas Jupiter and Paul Mercurius because he was the chief speaker. You know, there are people that have some personalities in their lives. Uh, in this case, they called him a chief speaker, a hero. And there are people that worship a hero. And it may be that same man you find on the field. And because of the way he's agile and active and kicks uh, this and kicks that. And he runs and he somersaults and he does this or that. You say, this is a great man. You make him a hero. And you make him a god. Or it may be a musician. The way he plays and the way he sings and the way people dance and the way people do this and that. He turns their mind and their head and they can pay any amount of money to go and watch the show. You make him a god. Or it may be a benefactor. Somebody, he has this, he's generous, he gives this and he gives that. And you make him a god. Or it may be a speaker. Anytime he speaks, you, you just turns your mind and sways your mind this way and that way. And you make him a God. That's what he did here. And Paul the Apostle was going to tell them, you must turn. If you're making any man, any hero, if you're making anyone, whatever they may be, if you're making them a God in your life, and then look at verse, look at verse 13, then the priest of Jupiter, which was before their city, brought oxen and gallants unto the gates, and would have done sacrifice with the people. There are people, when you make somebody a God, you can sacrifice anything for them. You can give up anything for them. You can even give up your Bible, give up your reading the Bible, and give up Bible study, and give up worship, and give up prayer, give up whatever it is because of them. You make them a God. If they threaten you, and you say, ah, you're going to church too much, and you're praying too much, and you're doing this too much. If you do that again, we'll stop this that we have been giving you. When you make them a God, you say, no, don't stop, don't stop. I will stop everything I'm doing. Because to make them a God, you sacrifice your very life unto them. Which, when the apostles, Barnabas and Paul, had all, they wrenched their clothes and ran in among the people, crying out and saying, Sirs, why do ye these things? We also are men of like passions with you, and preach unto you that she turn, that's the word, turn, that she turn, that she turn from these, from these vanities 
Unto who? Unto the living God. The Lord is telling us then that that is what we need to do. That you turn from all these vanities, you turn from all these sacrifices, and you turn from all the things you embrace, the things you love, and the things you pay homage to, and the things you adore, and the things you worship. You turn away from them. Other people make money their God. They can do anything for money. They can sacrifice even their families for money. And the Lord is saying, turn away from such a God and turn unto the living God because he is the God which made heaven and earth and the sea and all things that are therein. And I pray that as we hear that, the Lord himself will help us, will come to the living God. Will abide with the living God. Now, after you have come to the living God, you don't mix uh, serving the living God with any other worship. Look at first, Second Corinthians chapter six. Second Corinthians chapter six. I'm reading to you from verse sixteen. Second Corinthians chapter six, verse sixteen. And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For ye are the living God. Uh, sorry, ye are the temple of who? Of the living God, as God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. It says, you'll not mix the worship of the living God or the worship of idols. What agreement has the temple of God with idols? You turn completely away from all those things, wherefore come out from among them, and be separate, says the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and I will be a father unto you. You and you shall be my sons and my daughters, says the Lord God Almighty. We're looking at Hebrews chapter 3. When you have come to know the living God, that now he is your God, he is your Father. And Jesus Christ has reconciled you with the Heavenly Father. And you know him, that he is the living God, and you abide in him. The Lord is warning us, don't ever depart from the Lord. We're not going to depart from the Lord will abide with the Lord for the rest of our lives in Jesus' name. Whatever happens, whatever comes, we'll stay with the Lord. Because after all, he has a solution to all our problems. I said he has a solution to all our problems. If the lions come up, we're not going to deny the Lord. And we're not going to run away from the Lord, depart from the Lord. Because of the lions, he will save us and deliver us from the lions. If persecutors rise, we're not going to go away from the Lord. Because of persecutors, because he will silence all our persecutors. Give me a good amen. amen. And if sickness comes once in a while, you know, this body of clay, this flesh, sometimes uh, tiredness may come, weariness may come, or sickness may come. But we know, he says, I am the Lord that does what? That healeth thee. We're not going to go away from the Lord because of sickness. Affliction may come. It says many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord does what? Delivereth him from them all. Whatever comes then, whatever happens then, we're not going to deny the Lord. We're going to remain, abide with the Lord for the rest of our lives in Jesus' name. That's why the Hebrews chapter 3. Hebrews chapter 3, I'm reading to you from verse 12. Hebrews chapter 3 verse 12. It says, take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. What makes people to depart from the living God? It's unbelief. It's unbelief. A mountain has reared up itself, and they don't know that God can remove that mountain. Unbelief, that's why they run away from the Lord. Or maybe sickness, maybe affliction, maybe oppression, maybe, a, maybe whatever, maybe poverty, maybe joblessness, maybe it is the anger of an enemy that is frowning at them, and then because of that, they don't understand the living God is greater than every enemy. And no matter who they are, we're not going to forsake the law because of anybody. It says, take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. Let's look at chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10. And I'm reading to you there from verse 22. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 22. Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith. Let's draw near. When you have a problem, draw nearer to God. 
and when there is a persecution drawn near unto God, and when there is something trying to intimidate you, make you afraid, make you panic, and make you tremble, draw nearer unto God, it says, let us draw near with a true heart, in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience, and our body washed with pure water. Let us hold fast. How do we hold what we believe? How do we hold what we believe? Hold it fast. And you know, when you're sick, you're, you're very tender. And when you're, when you're sick, it appears what you are holding, you cannot hold it again. And you hold it with a loose hand. If your relatives will come and they will say, How about this? How about this? You say, Well, you are my people. Whatever you say, no, you have the final say. I said you have the final say. And if you, uh, if you exercise your authority and your faith, this sin, it comes and it will go. I said it has come, it will go. That's why the Bible says, and it came to pass. It has not come to stay, it has come to pass. It will pass away. I said it will pass away. That's the reason why, whatever the lions are, Whatever the persecutors are, you are standing firm with the Lord. And then you are holding fast the profession of your faith without wavering. For he is faithful that promise. He will see you through. I said he will see you through. This our God is the omnipresent God. He fills both the earth and the heaven. Is the omnis- omniscient God. That means he knows all things. Is the omnipotent God. He can do all things. Is the possessor of the heavens and the earth. Is of unspotted perfect purity. Is the infinite God that is infinite in love, infinite in wisdom, infinite in power, and is good and merciful. His mercy will never leave your life in Jesus' name. Point number two now, Daniel chapter 6. Daniel chapter 6. We're looking at verse 26. Daniel chapter 6. Verse 26. I make a decree that in every dominion of my kingdom, men tremble and fear before the God of Daniel. Look up, brothers and sisters, for a moment. I make a decree. You know, it's wonderful when you see you've done something wrong to be able to reverse that thing. You know, there are people, if they do something wrong, if they're going in the wrong direction, and then they come, there comes a discovery, and the light shines in your heart. Oh, they say, I'm going to, I'm going to hold on to my integrity. I'm going to hold on to my self-esteem. I'm going to hold on to my personality. If I turn around, if I change, people will think, I'm not a stable fellow. What am I saying? Darius made a decree before. And he signed that decree. If anybody will pray to any God anywhere, except unto him, Darius. For all these 30 days, he'll be thrown into a lion's den. And now, that thing had happened. That Daniel prayed. He threw him to a lion's den. And then Daniel came out without being hurt. And then Darius said, I was wrong. All these presidents and princes and persecutors, they deceived me. I have been deceived in making that decree. Now, I'm going to correct what is wrong in your life. That's what makes you a great man. That's what makes you a great woman. That's what makes you a real believer. That's what makes heaven to, to smile upon you. When you know, I've done something wrong. I signed a wrong decree. The direction I was going, that was wrong. Now I reverse everything. And you see what he has done here. He reversed the decree that he made before. He said, throw that one away. Although they said, it's by the law of the medicine, the passions that altereth not. That changes not. He said, this miracle has changed the law of the Persians and of the Medes. And this miracle that I see has altered everything I ever signed. I cancel that one. I throw that one away. I wipe that one out. If you will do that in your life, God's blessing will come upon you. 
And God will write about you in his book, in the book of remembrance. That's why Darius' name is over here. And the decree, the new decree, that's why it's over here. Because he reversed the original decree. You look at your life. What, what things have you said? There are some people that say, once I determine, this is what I will do. I will do it. Even if I discover later I was wrong, I will still do what I said I will do. Once I have signed something, and once I've committed myself, I want to be a man of my word. And even if I see that I was wrong, I'm going to still keep to it because I'm a man of my word, not Darius. Darius said I was wrong. That's what a decree I can say. What's it in your life? That you now discover, as we study the word of God, what promise have you made, you now discover you are wrong. And what sin have you signed, you now discover you are wrong. And what a kind of decision have you taken before. And now you see that you are wrong, you will reverse it tonight. And that's why Darius, that's what he did. He said, I reverse that thing. I make a new decree. This new decree supersedes the other decree. This new decree cancels the other decree. Forget about that one. I was deceived into that. This is the decree now. We're going to walk by. And as we walk by this new decree, the blessing of God will be abundant in your life in Jesus' name. That's repentance. That's restitution. That's turning around. That's saying, I was wrong. I will not do that again. I will not say that again. I will not sign something like that again. I'm going to now stand by a new word, a new promise, a new decision, a new decree. And that's the reason we'll come to study the Bible. So that as we're studying the Bible and the word of God reveals something to you that you are wrong in addition to you are wrong in something you said. You are wrong in something you did. You are wrong in an action that you took. You say, Lord, now I realize I'm going to change. I'm going to turn around. Everything will be new from today in Jesus' name. Come back to Daniel chapter 6 and verse 26. I make a decree that in every dominion of my kingdom, men tremble and fear before the God of Daniel. For he is the living God, steadfast forever. And his kingdom, that which shall not be destroyed, and his dominion shall be even unto the end. He's telling us about the authority of this living God. It is common knowledge that the great kingdoms of the past have been destroyed. When the Cadmus and Darius received revelations of he from heaven, they became enlightened and they awakened to the spiritual realities and divine truth. They both affirmed that the only living God, the eternal God, will have only the living God, only the eternal God will have a kingdom, a dominion which shall not be destroyed. That's what he said here and that was what the dream of, that of uh, Nebuchadnezzar revealed. Let's look at Daniel chapter 2 verse 44. Daniel chapter 2 verse 44. And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. God shall set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed and the kingdom shall not be left to other people but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms and it shall stand forever the kingdom of god will stand forever that's what Nebuchadnezzar eventually realized let's look at daniel chapter 4 verse 34 daniel chapter 4 verse 34 and at the end of the days I, Daniel, lifted up mine eyes unto heaven, and mine understanding returned unto me. And I blessed the Most High, and I praised and honored him that liveth how long? Forever. Whose dominion is what kind of dominion? An everlasting dominion, and his kingdom is from generation to generation. When the light came, when the knowledge came, when enlightenment came into them, then they knew that this 
God is an everlasting God. And his kingdom, his dominion is from generation to generation. It will not be left to another. It will not be destroyed. Was that peculiar to Nebuchadnezzar? Was that peculiar to Darius? Did other people know that this God has a dominion that will be forever and ever? Let's see the word of God in Exodus chapter 15. Exodus chapter 15, we're looking at verse 18. Exodus 15, verse 18. The Lord shall reign forever and ever. A good amen. It will reign in your heart. It will reign in your life. It will reign in your business. It will reign in your family. And it will reign forever and ever. You know the implication of that? The moment you commit your life to the Lord, you never look back again. You say, I've given my life to the Lord and on and on forever and ever. It will reign in my life here. And then when you cross over from us to heaven, the Lord is still reigning. It means that you'll never give the throne of your heart to any other God anymore to any other supreme being anymore and to any other master any other lord anymore you say jesus is my lord he has become my savior and i've given the control of my life unto him and this god the king of heaven and earth he is my king now he is my lord now he is my director my leader my master my controller and because of that he shall reign in my heart in my life forever and ever i pray to be so. In Psalm 93, we're looking at verse 1. Psalm 93, verse 1. The Lord reigneth, he is clothed with majesty. The Lord is clothed with strength, wherewith he has guarded himself. The world also is established that it cannot be moved. It tells us it's because the Lord is reigning, because the Lord is in control. That's why the world is established. And if the Lord is in control of your life, your life will be established. Nothing you build and nothing you develop, nothing you plan will ever be destroyed in Jesus' name. You know, there are people, they say, I don't understand. And they go about, they go here and there. And they say, I don't know whether a curse is following after me. If I try to develop this and just at the time, it's going to be established. Everything will crumble again. And then I start another thing. And just at the time I'm going to be established, everything will crumble again. What's the solution to that? The solution to that. That is to invite the almighty God, the living God, the God of the heavens and the earth, and the one that controls the whole universe, and he makes the world to be established, is to invite him to your heart and life, and to say, Lord, I've tried my best, I've tried everything I could, and every time I want to get it established, it's been demolished, I now give it into your hand, because I know anything that is surrendered into the hand of the Lord is going to be established. And then when you allow the Lord to take control and to rule and to reign forever and ever, you will never be disappointed in Jesus' name. We're looking at Psalm 45, Psalm 45, and we're reading from verse 6. Psalm 45, verse 6. Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of thy kingdom is a right scepter. That means then, the throne of God. We're talking about his throne in heaven. And also he has throne here on earth. And then in your heart, he has a throne. You say, Lord, reign. Reign, Master Jesus. Reign, Master Jesus. In my heart, in my life, in my family, reign. Reign, Master Jesus. Say, there's a throne in my heart for the Lord. And I'm not going to have another Lord, another God, another being, another master, another controller over there on my heart forever and ever. Jesus will reign in your life in Jesus' name. And we're looking at Psalm 145. Psalm 145. I'm reading from verse 11. Psalm 145, verse 11. In Psalm 145, verse 11, here is what it says. They shall speak of the glory of thy kingdom and talk of thy power to make known uh, to the sons of men his mighty acts and the glorious majesty of his kingdom. Thy kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and I, and the dominion endureth throw out what all generations and one one four six verse ten one forty six verse ten the Lord shall reign forever the Lord shall reign forever 
Even thy God, O Zion, to all generations, praise ye the Lord. We're looking at Revelation chapter 11, verse 15. Revelation chapter 11, and here we're looking at verse 15. That's when the kingdoms of this world, when they eventually come to the Lord Jesus Christ, He rules without a rival. And He rules without anybody that can say, what are you doing there? Revelation chapter 11, verse 15. And the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven saying, the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ. And he shall reign for how long? Forever and ever. The reign of the eternal God, the everlasting king, extends over all people. In all the nations, from generation to generation, God's authority and dominion are limited and unrestricted. His sovereignty is unconfined and his power is irresistible. The scriptures are full of the revelation of God's everlasting dominion. God's dominion is not only in the world, but also it's in heaven. It is not only in time, it's also in eternity. The duration of his reign extends through all eternity. God's dominion over men, over angels, will be forever and ever. All men, even Pharaoh or Saul or Nebuchadnezzar or Darius or Alexander the Great or Herod or Caesar or Nero, anyone, anyone, anyone that has anything, all, all of them, they came to an end and their kingdoms and dominions always they, they came to an end. They all came to an end. We shall continue to see the end of man's reign. But the time, time is not long enough to put God's reign to an end. The eternal God shall reign forever and ever. The government of the everlasting eternal king shall be forever. All his creatures, all men, all angels shall be ruled by his will, by his word, by his laws. And as the almighty God, he is qualified in every way to govern and to rule over all men, over all things, over all angels forever and ever. Dominion is his. And he has supreme power to exercise over all. By his omnipotence, he has established and sustained the earth and the heavens with all the inhabitants therein. By his infinite power, his infinite wisdom, will he reign over all forever and ever. He is clothed with majesty. The robe of royal of his royalty will be will be ever glorious, and his kingdom and dominion, his majesty and glory, his wisdom and strength will be shown in eternal splendor in the sight of saints and angels forever and ever. And the people of God said. Amen. Now we're going to look at the acts of this living God. We have seen, we have seen the attributes of the living God, and we have seen the authority of the living God. Now we want to see His action, what He does, and what He did at that time, and what He's still doing today. We're looking at Daniel chapter six, and we're reading from verse twenty-seven. Daniel chapter six, verse twenty-seven. Let's see the act of the living God. In Daniel chapter six, verse twenty-seven, He delivered delivereth and rescueth, and he walketh signs and wonders in heaven and in earth, who has delivered Daniel from the power of lions. As you look at this verse, you, you rest and say, praise the Lord, the same God is my God. And our God is not a partial God. Our God is not a respecter of persons. If he saved, if he delivered, if he protected, if he rescued the believers of the past generation, all the believers you included in this generation, he will rescue you. He will deliver you. He will protect you. If you will rest and relax in the Lord, like Daniel did, like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did, like Elijah and Elisha did, like Moses and Joshua did, like all those people of God did in the past, if you will rest in the Lord and believe in the Lord, no problem will crush you in Jesus' name. And no lion will be able to destroy you in Jesus' name. 
you can rest assured that the faithful God will be faithful to his word, will be faithful to his promise, and when you pray, the Lord will answer that prayer. We're looking at the acts of the living God. We're looking at Psalm 97, verse 10. Not Psalm 97, we're looking at verse 10. Still giving us the assurance that this God is a mighty God. And because of the love we have towards him, he's going to deliver, going to protect us in Jesus' name. Psalm 97, verse 10. Ye that love the Lord, hate evil. He preserveth the souls of his saints. He preserveth the souls of his saints. He preserveth the souls of his saints. Will he preserve you? He will. Because it says, he delivers them out of the hand of the wicked. He is mightier than the wicked. He is more powerful than the wicked. He will deliver you in Jesus' name. Job chapter 5. Job chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 8. Job chapter 5. Reading from verse 8, I would seek unto God, and unto God would I commit my cause. That ought to be your decision. Because you know, He delivers, He rescues, He heals, He supports, He provides, He takes care of His own. Because of that, you ought to say, I would seek unto God. Unto God would I commit my cause, which doeth great things and unsearchable. Marvelous things, tell me the rest, without number, uncountable, innumerable. He does miracles uncountable. He does uh, wonder signs and wonders innumerable. From this year, you will know it in your life. Who giveth rain upon the earth and sendeth water upon the field. In verse 11, to set up on high those that are low. If you are low today, he will raise you up. It will set you on high because you are low. That, that those that mourn may be exalted to safety. Your tears it will wipe away. In verse 12, it says, He disappointed the devices of the crafty. You see, all those princes and all those presidents, they were, they were saying, uh-huh, we got him. The king, Darius, he wanted to promote him above us and beyond us. He wanted to make him number one. And you know, we're very clever. Why, if not for our cleverness, we we'll would not have been able to get rid of him. That man, you know, his character was all right. Everything was all right. And the king was trying, instead of the king considering us, he wanted to put Daniel on top of everybody. But now we shut him up in the lion's den. Are you powerful enough to shut up a saint of God in the lion's den? Wait until tomorrow morning. I said, wait until tomorrow morning. You know, the morning came and then Darius ran there. I said, Daniel, are you still there? Oh, yes, he said, I'm here, O king. Because the Lord has sent his angel. And then all the craftiness and all the devices of all those people, the Lord turned everything around. And then, you know, the king now said, all right, Daniel, come out. And when Daniel came out, he said, why don't you go there to, to see whether you are better than Daniel or not? And then he packed all of them and put them in that place. They never came back. I said they never came back. Because the pit that they tried to dig for the man of God, for you, a child of God, well, I want them to repent. I pray that they will not perish. But if, they don't, if your enemies don't repent, well, they will tell the story in eternity. But thank God we are children of God. The protection of God will be upon you in Jesus' name. I've marked this one in my Bible, this verse 12. Mark it in your Bible. He disappointed the devices of the crafty. All the devices and the plots and the plans of your enemies, the Lord will disappoint them in Jesus' name. They want to hear bad news concerning you. They will wait and wait. They'll never hear bad news concerning you in Jesus' name. They want to hear the friends of Daniel and the relatives for them mourning and going about and fasting. They cannot eat because Daniel, our friend, is eaten up by the lions. Daniel, our relative, has been destroyed by us. They will never hear bad news in Jesus' name. He disappointed the devices of the crafty so that their hands cannot, their hands cannot perform their enterprise. It will not happen. I said it will not happen. 
you will be safe and secured and protected and preserved in Jesus' name. Job chapter 9. Job chapter 9. I'm looking at verse 4. He is wise in heart and mighty in strength. That's your God. That's your Redeemer. That's your Savior. That's your Father in heaven. He is wise in heart and is mighty in strength. Who has hardened himself against him and has prospered. No one. Never. Let's look at it from verse 10. Which doeth great things past Finding out, ye wonders, tell me the rest. Why don't you just accept it this year that God is going to do signs innumerable, uncountable in your life and in your family. Because you trust in the Lord, it will happen in Jesus' name. Which doeth great things, not small things. This year, you are not for small miracle. Small things, great, great things are going to happen. Which doeth great things, past finding out. And yea, wonders without number. Lo, he goeth by me, and I see him not. He passeth also, and but I perceive him not. Behold, he taketh away, and who can hinder him? Who will say unto him, What doest thou? Our God is wonderful. Our God is mighty. And this year will be a year of that same signs and wonders in Jesus' name. We're looking at Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 8, Isaiah chapter 8. Now Daniel is gone, but we're still here. Darius is gone, but the kings of the world are still here. Those princes and, and, uh, and presidents and prosecutors, they're still around, but the Lord is looking over you. Is protecting you. And signs and wonders innumerable without number will happen in your life this year. Isaiah chapter 8 verse 18. Isaiah chapter 8, we're looking at verse 18. Behold, I and the children whom the Lord has given me are for signs and for wonders in Israel from the Lord of hosts which dwelleth in Mount Zion. I believe that when, when Daniel came out of that place and he saw the sign and the wonder, everybody looking at him, he said, look at me very well, look at me very well. Behold, I and the children whom the Lord has given me were for signs and were for wonders in Babylon. And in your community, you are for signs and for wonders. In your school, you are for signs and wonders. In your college, university, you are for signs and wonders. And in your state, in your region, anywhere you are, you are for signs and for wonders. And the next time when I see you and you see me, I'll tell you testimony, you'll tell me testimony. And the testimony of great, great things will never stop in your mouth in Jesus' name. Why don't you stand up and receive it from the Lord? God give it to Daniel, he'll give it to you. God give it to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, he'll give it to you. Signs and wonders for the people of God this year. Open your mouth and tell, and tell the Lord. Thank the Lord for what we have learned today. And you see that the decree was reversed. Every negative thing that any Darius has written concerning you is going to reverse it himself. This year is going to be a year of blessing. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord in prayer. Great things without number. Good things without number. Signs and wonders without number. Innumerable. The things that God will do that will make the people of the world to reverse the negative things they said before and the negative things they planned before upon you. Because the Lord is going to reverse, He's going to destroy all the devices of the enemy concerning your life. Is the living God, He liveth forever and ever. Is the mighty God, is the all, all, all powerful God, all sufficient God, a God without limitation, a God without weakness, a God without failure, a God of all power. He reigns in heaven, He reigns on earth, He reigns in your heart. Trust Him, believe in Him. Daniel believed in his God. That's why what those persecutors were intending to see. They couldn't see that. But tomorrow morning, we'll see that sign in your life. That wonder in your life. Darius will write about it. Kings will write about it. 
Men and women will write about it. The great wonders the Lord will do in your life, in your family. People will talk about it. And you will draw closer, nearer to God. You say, what a God is this, a mighty God is this, that has preserved my life and delivered me and rescued me. You will rejoice this year. Because our God is your God. The living God is your God. He is your Father. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. You can rest in Him. You can trust in Him. Enemies will not be able to laugh at you. The persecutors will not be able to see your defeat. What they thought will be the end will not be the end. You still have a ministry. You still have a ministry. You still have a commission. And the Lord will preserve your life and protect your life. Good things will happen to you. And good things will happen through you. Hold on to the Lord. Be steadfast. Be stable. Don't forsake the living God for a dead God. Turn. And turn to the living God. Abide in the living God. Rest in Him. Rest in Him. He will do wonders in your life without number. Innumerable, uncountable. You'll fill your mouth with testimony. You will rejoice. Darius will rejoice with you. Your neighbors will rejoice with you. Friends will rejoice with you. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. There's no fear. No defeat. For the people that trust in the Lord. The Lord is on your side. He will deliver you from every evil. This year will be different for you. The Lord has started already. You know he has started already. It's well with you. It's well with your soul. He's a living God. You'll find him alive in every situation of your life throughout this year. He's a God of majesty and authority. You'll find that majesty and authority in your life throughout this year. He's a God of mighty acts. Mighty acts. Miraculous acts. Marvelous acts. You'll find that in your life throughout this year. Trust in the Lord. There's no disappointment for those who trust in the Lord. Turn to the Lord. And make up your mind. You will never forsake the Lord. And great, mighty, innumerable, uncountable will be the power, the miracles, the signs and the wonders of the Almighty God, your life all through this year. In Jesus' name we pray. And the people of God said, You know, this year we will laugh, we will not cry. All our enemies, they'll be disappointed in Jesus' name. The goodness of God, the glory of God will shine upon your life. And Darius, who had been sorrowful all the night, and he took all the music away from him, he said, my friend is gone, my friend is dead, my friend is torn away, he's torn by the lions. Then he woke up in the morning, and he's thinking that maybe you are gone, but you're still there. He thought, maybe your family is gone, but your family is still there. Your business is torn apart. No, but you're still there. Your business is still there. 
This year is a year of establishment. And the Lord will establish everything concerning you in Jesus' name. He thought, hey, maybe your wife has had miscarriage again. No, that's of the past. No miscarriage again. No evil again. And then he calls you by your name. He, he tries to knock at your door. Are you still? Oh, you say, come in. We're celebrating Jesus here. And we're celebrating the power of God here. Come in and sit down. And then you begin to tell testimonies upon testimonies. And your testimonies will never end in Jesus' name. This year, I will rejoice with you. Why don't you raise up your hand? We're going to pray. The Lord started from, you know, that uh, 1st of February, 1st of this month, and the 8th of this month, 15th of this month, and 22nd of this month. Now this is our last gathering together this month. We're going to seal all the blessing of God in your life. <laughs> Father, in the name of Jesus. We thank you for every brother here, every sister here. We thank you for every child, every boy and every girl. We thank you, Lord, for every member of this church. We pray, oh Lord, this year will be a year of establishment in Jesus' name. The goodness of God will reign in every life. The glory of God will reign in every life. Signs and wonders will follow everyone in Jesus' name. Lodge any lions then where your people are all those lions that want to tear the people of God apart will shut their mouths right now all the craftiness of the enemy that they want to destroy any child of God will take that child of God away from the mouth of the lion in Jesus name you will not die you will live your child will not die Members of your family will not die. Your business will not die. No sin that your touch will die in Jesus' name. Your enemies will be disappointed. Your persecutors will be disappointed. All your tears are wiped away. All your sorrow is taken away. Your sickness is taken away. Your affliction is taken away. All the mountains are gone. Everything you open your mouth to tell the Lord in this covenant month will seal it right now. God of heaven, God of power, God of majesty and God of glory, God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, and God of the saints on earth and saints in heaven, and the living God, the mighty God, the powerful God, oh Lord, right now because of your name. And we know that you will not allow your people to come to shame and say the prayers of your people in Jesus' name. Lord Jesus, you are Savior. You are Redeemer. You are Director. You are Master. You are our Messiah. You are the right hand of God, side of God and you are praying for everyone. Lord, I pray every good thing you are promising your word will come to your people this year in Jesus' name. Lord, we believe in you. We don't believe in the world. We don't believe in Satan. We don't believe in idols. We don't believe in any dead God. We believe in the living God. And Lord, we pray you will affirm, you will establish the faith of your people in Jesus' name. This year, your people will go from strength to strength. From power to power. From blessing to blessing. From glory to glory. We we'll rejoice in the abundance of the blessings of God. I pray nobody will remain sorrowful. Nobody will remain weak. Nobody will remain backward. Make your people the head and not the tail. Let them climb the mountain top this year in Jesus' name. When Darius comes to visit us early in the morning, wanting to see what has happened, what has happened, what has happened. Darius and all the people of Babylon, all the people of the world, all the people in our community, they'll see the glory of God. And they'll see the power of God protecting, preserving you in Jesus' name. The work of your hand will be established. Go back home and go and succeed. Go back home and go and rejoice. Go back home and go and celebrate. Because the Lord is on your side. And the blessing of God will never stop in your life. We thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. 
Amen. Amen. Another final amen. Higher, 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 higher. Higher, 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 Jesus, higher, 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 higher.